That wasn't my responsibility. Um, and again, we had people down, and that was something that um, took our attention at the time. Again, detective, this mysterious subject with the gun was you all's reason for shooting. Once everything is over, no one decided to pursue the reason you all were shooting in the first place? It was uh, something that happened instantaneously. Um, we were concentrating on making sure that the vehicle, the people in the vehicle uh, didn't attempt to hurt anyone else. And uh, I was uncertain as to what the other officers were doing. So this guy with the gun was that unimportant? I didn't say that. I just said that there may have been other people, there may have been other weapons in the car. And until we were convinced that uh, that's part of the situation was under control, that that's where our attention was. I have no further questions. <coughs> Anything else? Prosecution or defense? I would like to be known, Your Honor. Um, Dr. Greenberg, who is the autopsy examiner of Mr. Bell, um, the evidence was presented. He did his report and he stated that Mr. Bell was twice over the legal limit to be drinking and driving. And also, Dr. Daniel Friedman, who is Mr. Bell's optometrist, he actually examined him six months before his death and stated that his vision in his left eye was, I'm sorry, the vision in his right eye was 2400, which is legally blind in one eye. So therefore, Mr. Bell was half blind in the night that the incident occurred. May I ask you May I state to this court that, by, that even though those facts are so, none of those justify the officer using deadly force. Drunk driving is not a justification for an officer shooting and killing a suspect. His blood alcohol level could have been a thousand upon a thousand. That is not justification for shooting and killing uh, a person. 
according to case law, the statute standards allow an officer to use deadly force when the officer reasonably believes it is necessary to defend him, herself, or a third party from the use of intimate deadly force or arrest to prevent the escape of someone the officer reasonably believes has committed or attempted to commit a felony involving the affliction or threat of serious physical injury. And if feasible, the officer has given warning of his or her intent to use deadly force. It was stated by Detective Kip that he heard Detective, neither Detective Oliver nor his partners identified themselves as officers. Therefore, he did not give a warning as stated in the use of force law. Again, I respect the examinator's findings of the blood alcohol level in Sean Bell, but again, his blood alcohol level does not justify him being shot and killed. Anything else before we do closing arguments? Okay. Prosecution, closing arguments. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, we have a case where a man was at his bachelor's party the night before he was supposed to get married at a strip club, which is tradition for most guys. He had a few drinks, had an altercation with other members of the club. Now, it has been alleged that someone overheard that the victim was going to retrieve a gun and come back and cause harm. But the facts of the case state that the victim, that the victim was actually leaving the club. Now, upon leaving the club, <coughs> after being approached, after, after having an altercation previously, they were approached by more men with gun drawn. Not men in police uniform, not men in uniform, but men in regular clothes with guns drawn. Now, it is a natural instinct to flee when someone is coming at you with guns drawn. Yes, the, the victims flee and they have and he happened to brush an undercover officer. In, in, the, in the attempt to flee. But he was fleeing nonetheless. Now common sense tells us that no one that's fleeing from you is causing a threat to you. Now the officer, now the officer on trial has been charged with murder. This officer claims that he was being threatened. Now, as I stated earlier, case law says that even if you are justified in the beginning with attempting to use deadly force, that right ends once you feel you're no longer being threatened. Now, the officer on trial he shot 16 times, emptied his gun. Then reloaded and shot 15 more times. 
Now, at what point this court has to use common sense as to say, at what point did he no longer feel threatened? <laughs> so after he emptied the first clip, shot 15 times, along with all the other bullets that his co-workers had shot, you mean to tell me he still felt threatened to reload again and shoot, shoot 15 more times? Now, we also have to use common sense when it comes to dishonesty. If this officer felt that he had done nothing wrong, that he was totally justified, what was his reason for being dishonest? He told his co-worker that he wasn't sure if he had fired his gun at all. Now, how could you shoot 15 times? How could you, how could you empty two <coughs> clips and not be sure if you had fired your gun at all? His testimony to dishonesty should be obvious that he felt he had done something wrong. Because if he had done nothing wrong, he would have no reason to lie to his supervisor. So I ask you all, a man lost his life on the eve of his wedding. His kids would, no, would, would never have a father. His fiancée-to-be would, would, would never have him as a husband. I ask this court to bring justice to this victim and his family by finding this officer guilty of murder. Now, also if he had done nothing wrong, his superiors wouldn't have terminated him from his job. But he was terminated on the grounds that he used excessive force. Those were the, were the basis of his termination. He used excessive force. His use of excessive force caused the man's life. Something we would, he would, they would no longer get back. So I asked this court to bring justice to this victim and his family. Thank you. Was it an argument from defense? <coughs> Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, today we spoke on behalf of Officer Oliver and the untragic death of Mr. Bell. <coughs> a group of undercover officers were working in a gun and drug plague strip club in Queens and had a good reason to believe the party leaving the club was armed and about to shoot an adversary. Police officers make sound decisions on a daily basis to protect their lives and the lives of the citizens around them. I believe that if these actions wouldn't have taken place, we don't know what may have happened. Mr. Bell was very intoxicated and he could barely see. He lost his life, but there could have been many other lives taken as he drove home or to wherever his destination was. Our officers um, worked very hard to make sure that we don't make any fatal errors. And justified or not, um, we've driven down the rate of police shootings in the New York area drastically over the years. Um, our numbers have dropped from 1.82 down to a .25 for every 1,000 officers in the shootings. We work hard to protect our citizens. Unfortunately, we lost Mr. Bell but it could have been a lot worse had the officers not been in place at the time that the incident occurred. We ask that you make sound decisions and find fault with officers. Thank you. Anything else for prosecution? No, no. Okay. This court will stand in recess while the jury deliberates. But until then, do not speak of this case with anybody outside this room. This court is in recess. All right. Did you remember us? Please do stay. Please deliberate. <laughs> okay.